iOS 18.1 brings us phase one of Apple intelligence, including the all new Siri. Check it out. So yesterday, Apple released the iOS 18.1 beta, and if you go into settings, general software update, you'll see an own ramp for iOS 18.1. If you select that, then you'll be presented to update to the 18.1 beta, which releases later this fall and it contains the initial feature set for Apple intelligence. Now, this is for US phones only and your region must be set to US and it's only for the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and show you what Siri looks like normally before Apple intelligence, right? But if you go into settings for 18.1, you'll see a new Apple intelligence and Siri section, which replaces the Siri section that appeared a little bit below. So upon initial setup, you have to join the Apple intelligence wait list. So you have to reserve your spot on the wait list and get ready to experience Apple intelligence. So when you tap that, you'll see this splash screen for AI or Apple intelligence. It talks about the new tools you can use to express yourself. A lot of those tools aren't available in this initial phase. There's also the new Siri that it talks about in the privacy aspect. Now I joined the wait list and you can see it automatically just enrolls me just like that. So I didn't actually receive a notification because I guess I was still on that same page, but nonetheless, this is what you see once you accept and you'll get this new preview of the new Siri UI that you get when you invoke Siri. Sorry for saying Siri so much. <laughs> so you tap continue and it tells you to speak to your assistant so you can hold the side button there or there's a new option and this is really cool. You can type to your assistant. So you double tap the bottom edge of the screen to type your request. That's really cool. I did have to reboot my phone before that started working, just an FYI. So here we are. This is the new Siri with Apple intelligence. So let's go ahead and invoke it. This is what you see. This is the new UI. It sort of surrounds the edge of the phone, which kind of explains that new bezel imprint that you get when you press the side button and volume buttons as well. What time is it? There we go. There's our current time. So. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice this little feedback button. You tap that and this lets you share feedback about your experience. So you can tell it how it performed. You can give it additional information. It even includes the attachments for it, both your request and the response. You can see there's my request. What time is it? And then the response, it'll give you a little PNG for that. So watch what happens when I tap the bottom of the screen. I get a little preview of that home indicator with the new type to your assistant option. So when you double tap that, that brings up the type to assistant interface. So I can type my request. What time is it? And just send it like that directly to the assistant. And then I can also use audible requests at the same time. So I can jump back and forth between the two. No problem. It totally understands with no issue. So I can say, what about in Guatemala, which I spelled wrong. And it recognizes the context, right? That I was talking about time. I didn't have to say, what time is it in Guatemala? I just said, what about it? And what about Chicago? So seamless switching between voice and text commands. What's the weather like in Chicago? Actually, no, never mind. Where's Apple headquarters located? The old version doesn't handle confusing requests like that as well as the new version. What's the weather like in Chicago? No, actually, never mind. Um, what's, where's Apple HQ located? That's impressive. So it recognizes my mistake and corrects it accordingly. And I can even ask it how to do things like how to turn on dark mode. And it does so just like that quickly with on device processing in this case. Very nice. Previously, it would have just presented a toggle for dark mode. Now here is one of the really impressive things about the new Apple intelligence, and that is the writing tool. So you can see this paragraph, it is a mess. What's the best way to make cake? First, you want to put the ingredients, which is spelled wrong in a bowl and mix it all up and thoroughly. Then you want to preheat Irvin. Next, put the mixed battery in a cake. It's just, it's terrible, right? I obviously was half asleep when I wrote this out, but no problem. Why? Because Apple intelligence to the rescue. So invoke the copy paste menu, just tap a little arrow there. You'll see writing tools, tap writing tools, and there you go. So you get all sorts of tools, proofread and rewrite are the main ones, but then you have the sort of inflection that you want and various layouts for your responses. So let's try out proofread. So it just goes through with Apple intelligence. 
and you can see 18 changes just like that. So, so folks, really, this is the difference between writing something completely unreadable and something totally readable. And I can go through each change just by pressing the arrow like that. And I can see exactly what was fixed thanks to Apple intelligence. And I can quickly revert to the original if I want to, but in this case, I definitely don't want to. It was terrible. So you can see a much more legible paragraph here that I have thanks to Apple intelligence. So you can go through all that. And once we're done, we could just tap done. And there we go. We have something that's much more legible, much more confident when I'm sending this, no doubt. Now, I can also rewrite this if I want to. If I want to just recompose it, it will rewrite it in various styles here. So you can see it's a, a numbered list giving you everything that you need to do. But I can choose different styles like friendly. And you'll notice right off the bat, friendly likes to use exclamation points. So you can see here's how to make the best cake ever. Yeah. And then you see, enjoy at the very end. To check if it's done, poke a toothpick into the center. If it comes out clean, it's ready. Yeah. That's friendly, folks, just in case you didn't know. All right, so let's go ahead and retry that. And you can come up with a redo, sort of, of the friendly pros, just in case you weren't filling the initial version. Let's make it professional, though. And you'll notice professional likes to use the word subsequently a lot. Subsequently, preheat the oven. Subsequently, remove the cake from the oven and allow it to cool. Finally, apply icing to the cake and serve it to your guest. And then finally, there's the concise option, which I like because it just is clear cut, straight to the point, not a lot of fluff. So you also have your various layouts. So you have your summary and you can replace the text from the summary into whatever you're writing. You have key points, so it's just going to outline those key points. And you, again, you can replace the text if you want to. Uh, but this can also be for your benefit just to get an overview of what it is. And then you have a list as well. So you can put that in there. And then finally, there is the table that you can use. So we'll go ahead and try that out, show that to you. And again, this is available across multiple apps, not just mail, but any of Apple's stock apps and also third party apps as well. Uh, so that's going to be really cool to use. Now, if you go to settings, security, and privacy, you're going to notice a new Apple intelligence report. And what this will do is provide you a report of how Apple is using your data, basically. And you can choose it for the last 15 minutes or seven days. And this report, it's going to be blank here, but it tells you whether or not it's using a specific model uh, that's external or if it's using private cloud compute requests. So you're not in the dark about how your requests are being handled. You can also use the updated feedback app to rate your experiences with Apple intelligence as well. So that's going to be a nice little feature to enhance the AI experience. Now, you'll notice in 18.1, there is a new Apple intelligence assistant focus. So if we go to settings focus, you'll see reduce interruptions. Now this is different from all the other focuses because it uses intelligent breakthrough and silencing. So in other words, this is using AI to decide what notifications to allow and what notifications to silence. It isn't sort of like a canned setup, although you can establish certain parameters for it, but this relies on AI to determine whether or not to allow certain notifications through or not. And if you go to settings and you go to the mail app, you'll see this new summarized message preview. This is super cool. So it uses AI to give you a summary where the preview of the first few lines of the message used to be. So this gives you a really quick way to see exactly what this email is about. So a lot of times these messages will start off like, hey, I hope you're doing, I hope this message finds you well or something like that. Just get to the point, man. And that's what this helps you to do. See, you see, I hope this message finds you well. Well, we don't have to worry about that because you get that summary right off the bat. You know this is a review opportunity for the Keychron K2HE Magnetic Switch Custom Keyboard. So that's a really, really nice feature. Not only that, though, you also get priority messages that are established based on Apple intelligence. It will showcase what AI thinks are the most important messages. And then notice that summarize button in the upper right hand corner as well. So you can summarize all your emails for a quick synopsis of what it contains. But that's not all. You can also do something similar with the messages app. So you see the summarize messages option. Now notice these four messages. So I think I need to pick up some pasta sauce to finish the pizza. Could you grab a can? Ragu from Whole Foods? Well, notice when I collapse, it gives you a summary pick up ragu pasta sauce for pizza. So 
It's just really simple, straightforward to the point. You also get these quick replies that are formulated using Apple intelligence in messages and also in mail as well. So if you want to respond quickly to an email, so I'm just going to reply here and it's going to give you options here. So sure or not interested. Oops, let me go back there. So I can say not interested. If I just tap that, it's going to compose, not just say not interested, but it's going to say, hey, thanks for reaching out. I'm not interested in receiving the hardware at this time. So that can be super handy, save you a lot of time. Now, if we go into the um, Photos app, you're going to be able to now describe a memory and it's going to automatically create a movie for you based on your description. So I just typed in a mountain and it creates automatically this movie memory with sound and everything that includes, yes, you guessed it, tons of mountain pictures. Pretty cool little feature there in iOS 18.1. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. But not just that, there's also enhanced search. So now when you search for specific things, like I search for a cat, and you see the little blue lines there, so that shows you whenever your search term appears within the frame clearly. So cat appears when the blue is there. I need to clean my oven. But the point is the blue sections highlight when the subject appears. Now, here's another feature that Apple revealed at WWDC that we now have in 18.1, the ability to record phone calls. So once you're on a call, you press that button in the upper left hand corner and it alerts everyone on the call that the call has been recorded. And you also get that notification that you saw that links you to the notes, which this does the same thing when you tap the little waveform. So this note is what actually contains the phone call that is being recorded. So not only the audio, but also a voice transcription as well. Well, yes, I think one 12 ounce can is more than enough. You just let me know how much you need and I'll be there to pick it up. Uh, I don't know why I decided to use that voice, but nonetheless, this is what you get when you stop the phone call. So you see a notification, which will link you directly to the note I'm looking at now. And it gives you a full on link to transcript separated by participants. Listen. You probably think this middle child don't stop, man. What is wrong with this guy? Anyway, but that's the point. Like you can have full on recorded conversations. It's going to alert the participants, but you get this really nice transcript and obviously the actual audio file as well. And what you'll find if you go into the notes app, a new call recordings folder that contains all the call recordings that you have in a nice and easy to find place. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at iOS 18.1, a lot of the new Apple intelligence features, which one is your favorite? And we know there's still a lot more to come. So thumbs up if you appreciate this video and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And hey, go ahead and check out these videos because I think you'll like these too. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.